Good morning, Zion. Welcome home. You belong here. We belong together. I'm Pastor Dwayne Jesse, pastor at Zion Lutheran Church in Youngstown, Ohio. And today we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. It's Easter. Zion Lutheran Church is hosting live in-person corporate worship, and we want you to feel welcome to join us at either our blended service on Saturday at 5 p.m., or our traditional Lutheran liturgical service on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Well, it will be an uncharacteristically busy week this week at Zion. A few events around your church worth noting include our next Red Cross blood drawing will be this Thursday, April the 21st, from 1 to 6 p.m. Our next drive through Dinner will also be that day, Thursday, April the 21st, from 4 to 7 p.m. It will feature a turkey dinner and all the trimmings for $12. To order your meals, you must call the office today and reserve your meal or contact Norma Roden directly or go to the website zionohio.org and click on the drive through dinner tab. And then also on Saturday, April the 23rd, from 9 to noon, we will have an outdoor cleanup day. So please plan on participating in that. I want to thank you for your continued financial faithfulness. You had a couple of special opportunities to contribute this month. Holy Thursday offerings were designated to ELCA World Hunger Campaign, and the Good Friday offerings were designated to Protestant Family Services. To make a special offering or to contribute your regular tithes and offerings, I suggest using the zionohio.org website and clicking on the Give tab, or you can use this handy QR code located in the lower corner of your screen. Just point the camera of your smartphone at it, and it will direct you to the zionohio.org website Give tab. You can also use the Give Plus smartphone app, and you can always reach us by the U.S. mail. Assisting in worship today are Joan Gent, our Administrator of Worship and Music on the keyboards. Stephanie Chismar will be leading us in our singing and providing special music. Sherry Liturzo will be bringing us our prayers of intercession. Kari Wentz, our Administrator of Communications, produced this video. Eric Fargo edited the video. And Stephanie Chismar, our Director of Choirs, provided editing of the music. Now I invite you to join us in singing our processional hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Alleluia.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from 1 Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when, the hand, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, the one who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. 
Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. I have seen the Lord, Mary Magdalene shouted to the disciples. This is the closing passage of the Gospel reading for today. That was her announcement to the disciples, including Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved. Earlier that same morning, Mary had found the tomb open and she ran and told them what she had seen. Peter and this disciple whom Jesus loved went to the tomb themselves and verified the story. The unnamed disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, is presumed to be John, the author of this gospel. Of course he is. And he apparently was the faster runner of the two and the first to believe, although believe what is unclear. The two men had no answers for this mystery, and so John wrote they returned to their homes. Mary was unsatisfied. She went back to the tomb. Mary was still an emotional wreck over the goings-on of the last couple of days. None of this makes any sense, she must have been thinking. She loved this man whom she knew so well and called the Lord of her life. And he knew her better than anyone else and yet loved her despite knowing all the sordid details of her past and did not reject her. But then, in the strangest turn of events, he had been killed, crucified, a most heinous type of capital punishment reserved for the worst of criminals. As she walked hastily in the darkness, she thought, None of this makes any sense. Arriving back at the open tomb, she looked inside. She had not done that in her first visit to the tomb, and that's when she was greeted by two angels who asked her, Woman, why are you weeping? Honestly, that probably would have freaked me out. I've never encountered any angels that I'm aware of. Mary answered, but her answer isn't important. What is important is that for some reason she turned around and encountered another person whom she presumed to be the gardener who asked her the same question. Woman, why are you weeping? In that brief exchange that Mary finally realized that she was talking to Jesus Christ, her Lord. He is risen. And in her exhausted emotional state, she was so relieved that she threw herself at his feet and clung to him. Jesus told her not to cling to him because there was Easter work to be done. Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And then she told them that he had said these things to her. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Did you notice that Jesus called his followers his brothers? That relationship can be extended to all who believe in and put their faith in the risen Lord Jesus. The only other place that Jesus called his followers brothers and sisters was when he visited his hometown of Nazareth and people were confused who he was. They wanted to identify him and they did as so many of us do. Well, that is the son of so-and-so or the daughter of so-and-so. But post-resurrection, 
he identifies his followers as brothers and sisters. That makes Jesus Christ our brother. Did you notice that when he was talking about his followers, Jesus called his heavenly father, your father and your God. He used that expression only a couple of times in the Gospels, but post-resurrection, he identified his Heavenly Father as his followers, Heavenly Father. That relationship can also be extended to all who believe and put their faith in the risen Lord Jesus as well. That makes God our Heavenly Father too. Post-resurrection, Jesus, has significantly changed his relationship with us. We are now his brothers and sisters. Imagine, Jesus is our brother, and he has significantly changed his heavenly father's relationship with us too. He very clearly states that God is our heavenly father too. Imagine being a child of God. Well, Okay, so maybe that's not earth-shattering to you. After all, we use that kind of language in the church already. It just seems to me that post-resurrection Jesus was emphasizing the reformulation of divine relationships. Friends, the official liturgical name for this day is the resurrection of our Lord, colon, Easter. If you're a faithful Christian and Jesus is your brother and his heavenly father is your heavenly father, then you've heard the story of his resurrection every year of your whole life and you wouldn't want to ever miss it. Or maybe you are someone who goes to church with mom or grandma on Christmas and Easter because that's just what you do. You too have heard the story many times and this year may just be another in a long series of years. No matter who you are or why you are here, I have good news. And it's not, he is risen, despite the cover of our bulletin. Oh, don't get me wrong, I am a true believer that Jesus Christ, my Lord and my brother, rose from the dead, and now lives with our Heavenly Father in heaven for eternity. And that is good news. That is just not the good news that I want to focus on today. The good news that I want to focus on is that because he is risen, he, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our brother, is the first fruits of those who have died. What that means is that there will be others, including you and me, no one gets out of this alive, who have faith in him as Lord and Savior, who are the second fruits of those who have died or will die. But because Jesus Christ, our Lord and our brother, rose from the dead and demonstrated his power and authority over death, we, the second fruits of those who have died or will die, will also be raised too because we belong to Christ. He is our brother, and his heavenly father is our heavenly father. In the first reading from Acts chapter 10, Peter, a first-hand eyewitness to the risen Lord Jesus, taught that because God raised him from the dead, he is the one ordained by God as judge over the living and the dead. And Peter further taught that Everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Now, won't it be nice to have our brother Jesus Christ on the bench when we have our day of judgment? So the gate to the Garden of Eden, a metaphor for life eternal in heaven with God, our Heavenly Father, is no longer closed by human sin, but opened by the risen Lord Jesus Christ, our brother, and available to all who received forgiveness of sins through faith in him. Most of us have heard John's account of the resurrection many times. We can be left wondering how Mary, 
Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved could have been so dense. They lived with him, traveled with him, ministered with him, and they should have been listening and learning from him for three years, and yet they did not pick up on this most important teaching. Though he told them this would happen, they still did not believe. In our soberer moments, we have to admit he is the only one that we know of that has risen from the dead. This just doesn't happen unless he is truly the Son of God, and that makes all the difference. And if he truly is the Son of God, then he does have lordship over our lives. And we should want to worship him for his many benefits, not the least of which is the risen life we share with Christ. So today, whether you've heard it a hundred times before and believed, or whether this is the first time that you've actually listened, what I'm reminding you of is that post-resurrection Jesus Christ, the one who has the power over life and death, the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead, the one who gives forgiveness of sins through belief in him, the one who wants us to know him as our brother and his heavenly father as our heavenly father, has changed everything overnight. Before that Easter, we were lost to our sin. But on that Easter morning, everything changed. I know, none of this makes any sense. But because we have faith in him that it really happened, we can enjoy the benefits of the risen life we share with Christ. And we can enjoy it now. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
on this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world. Let us pray. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation abounds with signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants and provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world. Empower government agencies and international organizations that provide for refugees and migrants that are forced to leave their homelands. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way, especially those on our prayer list, our homebound, and those we now name before you, either silently or aloud. Send us as your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder in exploring new avenues of faith formation, worship, and discipleship. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Now please join in singing our sending hymn.
Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless us now and forever. Amen. You belong here. We belong together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.